Great. Thank you, Pariza, for that intro. Uh, and I'd like to first actually thank uh, Ron and the whole Hacktivate team for inviting me here today to give this presentation. It's, a, it's an honor for me to speak. Um, and so I was, like when Ron got in touch with me, right, uh, and he said, you know, come give a speech called Humble Beginnings, I was like, shit, I got to speak in front of people. And I don't do that because I, you know, I get nervous speaking in front of people, so please bear with me. Uh, but then I, I started to think, like, that's a great topic because, you know, I've been with Gojek now for more than two years, right? And this was before we even launched the app. We had an app, but we never launched it uh, yet. So I figured, you know what, let, let me take a crack at it. So that's why I'm here today, right? So humble beginnings, right? To start off with, let's just take a look at the word humble. I'm not going to go into too many definitions, but humble to me means, I mean, if you look up the definition, obviously, it means lowering of your importance or your status or your rank in when you're dealing with somebody, right? Uh, or it could be something lesser. Like, for example, you say, welcome to my humble home. It's a home. It's got four walls. It's got a roof, but doesn't have a jacuzzi or a swimming pool or whatever, but it's a home, right? It's humble. So you can look at humble as a word meaning lesser or lesser significance or lesser importance right um, i feel that it's a good word to be associated with in the form of learning uh, it, with the topic of learning right now i'll go into that a little bit later on but first we all like numbers so let's take a look at some numbers we are doing almost one million orders a day on gojek right now today Right, We have more than 1 million completed bookings. This does not include cancellations. We have some cancellations as well, but completed bookings is uh, almost 1 million. We have 25 services. Now, by service, I don't mean the little tiles that you see on the Gojek app. Right, We have internal services as well. So, for example, when we want to connect you, the consumer, with a driver, uh, picking a driver or, you know, the, the, the driver that, that is more likely to deliver your goods, that's another service. Uh, we have a POI service to search for, you know, dis uh, locations and calculate the distance between point A and point B. So internally, we have lots of different services, right? So we have about 25 of those. Then we have 40 million on average, requests to our front end. Our front end is running HA proxy. Uh, we have 40 million requests a second. This goes up sometimes to about 60 million. Uh, depends on the time of day. Uh, internally, Ajay, our, our CTO, present CTO, has told me on the internal services that number goes up to as high as 90 million to maybe about 120 million requests a second, uh, which, is, which is huge, pretty staggering. So that's a little bit about some of our internal numbers. This number you must have read before. This is the number of US dollars we raised at our last fundraise, right? Uh, this put us fairly, uh, fa pretty squarely into like unicorn territory with you know our company valuation being over 1 billion. Um, this was huge for us, right? We never, you know, looking back, we never expected we'd hit such high fundraisers so soon but you know here we are so with this this helped us grow very quickly again like our our next spurt of growth um and earlier this year we moved to our new offices in pasaraya i'll share some pictures with you it's a it's an amazing office i mean i was just telling ron just now it's it's crazy like we took two floors in the Pasaraya Mall. We we completely outfitted it. Uh, it's an open, f you know, open plan, but uh, it's really cool. We have a games room. You can play Dance Dance Revolution if you want. Shoot basketball hoops. We have a cafe. We have a fully functioning cafe. Um, and oops, we have an auditorium. 
right? That can sit more than 100 people. And so we have some of our Go Talks here. Uh, some of them are, you know, even open to the public. Um, so it's a it's an insane office, right? Uh, I often tell people, and I was telling Ron again today, I'm actually embarrassed sometimes to say we have such a nice office. And the reason I'm embarrassed is not because it's ugly or because you know anything's wrong with it. It's amazing. I, I love it. I just feel like you know I don't deserve to be in an office like this, right? This is a personal feeling, I, and I you know. I'm Obviously, I'm, I'm talking about humility and being humble. Uh, I feel like this is a general state of my being, right? It feels like it, this is really excessive. Uh, the reason for that is because you have to see where we came from, right? And I'm going to talk a little bit about that now. So we actually started off in a house in Jalanchiasam in Senopati. Two-story house, but we took one floor, right? This was our call center, the one on the left here. Uh, it held roughly 15 people. Uh, the one on the right is where we worked. Th th those desks were where we sat and worked. Right? We had 40 people crammed into that office. We had engineering, we had call center, we had operations. Everything was run out of that office, that one floor. There's another picture and a media shot of Nadim looking over the call center. So, looking back, you know, uh, while it's impressive that we've actually made it this far, there was a kind of an atmosphere back then that was really very cohesive. It held us all very, very close together. I think, for one, because we were also fairly small. You know, I could look across the room and yell at a developer, hey, you messed up the deploy, like roll it back, right? So it was that small. So that was a little bit about our office. So what I also told Ron just now was when he told me to speak about human and humble beginnings, I went through the WhatsApp director's chat, right? Uh, we all say that our companies run over WhatsApp, which is kind of true because we make a lot of decisions over WhatsApp. We're not always there in the same place at the same time or even in the same country. So we run it across WhatsApp. So what I did was I went back and I looked at my WhatsApp director's chat. And I found a few snippets, which I'm going to share with you guys now. So this was about a month after we launched our app, right? Uh, at 10 PM, Nadim yelling, yay, 760 orders, right? And Rama, one of our directors at the time, saying, good job. And then what's interesting is Nadim's other comments, like, we have almost the same volume as Beribenka. And like in six months, we hope to get to Zalora level if we don't run out of cash. This was some of the, this was actually a statement that we'd always use, right? If we don't run out of cash. We had a lot of ambition, but you know, we, were, we weren't frivolous in our spending. We spent it, we feel on the all right things, but uh, you know, we were still running pretty close to the edge. So I'm going to share a bit more. The top one says we are at 1,800 drivers. This is, again, uh, in February 2015. And right now, we're at close to a quarter of a million drivers, so 250,000 drivers nationwide. And then again, the the, the bottom one is like about 12 days later, two weeks later, we hit 1,200 orders, right? So we, we were pretty humbled by like what we saw in terms of how many people were beginning to use Gojek. Then the end of that month, something amazing happened to me, and I had to write about it. <laughs> I was at a restaurant. I was minding my own business. I was eating. And then this dude comes up to me and says, hey, you work at Gojek, right? Can I take a picture with you? I was like, oh my god. <laughs> right? And we had Mikey. I don't know how many of you know DJ Mikey. At the time, Mikey was like, hey, such a celeb, right? And then I was like, dude, is this what it feels like to be a celeb? Like random people come up to you and just talk to you? Uh, that, was, that was a pretty unreal moment. And then there were moments like this. 
Nadeem saying, I feel so blessed that together we have created a product that can change people's lives for the better. This was said like February 2015. And we still feel that way, right? It's, it's insane for us to see how much people have begun to adopt Gojek and use it for their day-to-day -day lives. Of course, we, you know, everything wasn't smooth sailing. There was this time when on a Friday, four months after we had launched, uh, one of our providers went down. And so we were down for like half a day. Uh, but that was, that was a bad one. I mean, you have your ups and downs. You, you, you learn from them. You recover. We've since engineered for failure. That's what they say when you're using cloud infrastructure, right? You always expect to fail. So uh, we did that. So these were a few of the moments that I was fortunate to actually relive this past few weeks making this presentation because I'd forgotten about these, right? Uh, so going back through the chats, I actually, I think I must have spent like a whole day going through the chats, right? Going through the chats, I realized, okay, so what can I actually bring to you guys from this whole exercise? So I with two things, right, that I noticed that we had in this group. The first one was never be afraid to ask for help. Right? We, we didn't believe we had our own islands, like this is my tech island, this is my operations island or whatever. We just felt it was Gojek, right? Everything was ours to solve. So... And in doing that, we were always willing to help each other, right? We, you know, even if it wasn't my work to do, like pulling data for someone, I would do it, right? And conversely, we also weren't afraid to say, dude, I don't know how to do this. I need some help. I mean, Ron probably remembers. We've met before, and we discussed some of the issues we had. Kevin and Ron were pretty close at the time. Uh, you know, we'd reach out, right? If we didn't know how to do something, we'd, we'd ask somebody for help. And if, you know, if within the directors we didn't know, we would kind of refer to our network, our friends, right? So that was one very important thing that I noticed. Then, coming back to the being humble part, intellectual humility. I think if at all, this is probably the most important point that I took away from this. Um, so essentially what we're doing is we're attaching the word humble to the word intellectual. So humble, lowering your status, intellectual to your intelligence. So this does not mean like I'm calling you dumb. It means if you want to learn, right, you have to always come from a place of humility. Sure. These days we're tempted to say, oh, I know it all. I can do everything. Right, I have this much knowledge, and you know, the more you achieve, the more your ego builds up, and you feel like you can do everything. But it's important to keep in mind what you don't know, right? And this is a very, very key part to learning. So back then, we never assumed that we knew everything. We always kept an open mind that we could be wrong, there was somebody better who could do, do, do it better than we could. And that helped me personally learn as well, not just you know in Gojek, but throughout my career. So I've come across a lot of developers in my 17 odd years working, not just at Gojek. And some of the best developers that I've come across were all humble. They never were like in my face, like, yo, I know this, I could do any this better than anyone. They were all they were amazing developers, like and even hackers, right? They were amazing, but they never said that how good they were. They were always willing to listen and always willing to learn. So I think you guys have already taken a really good step in in kind of leveling up your skills. But I think don't stop there, right? You have to go on and on. And as you go on, even you know, throughout your enjoy learning about new stuff. So, um, yeah, if there's, if there's one thing I can leave you with at this, uh, at this talk, be humble. And I'll leave you with that. This was a lyric from uh, Kendrick Lamar's new song. 
I censored it. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>